Orkney is an unusual place because it sits at the crossroads of the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. And from that point of view, it's been a stopping off place for people on voyages between different locations, for trading. And it's because of that position, it also creates unusual conditions in terms of the marine environment. And in Orkney, we're very blessed to have several blue carbon habitats of interest, which include seagrass meadows, uh, merle beds, shellfish reefs, and a huge amount of kelp forest. We are here to study how kelp uh, fixes carbon away from the atmosphere and where that carbon ends up with the hope that in the future we can protect that carbon uh, and help fight climate change. We chose Orkney for this project because we have this beautiful combination of very pristine and extensive kelp habitat in combination with the grassroots support for the protection of ocean carbon, what we call blue carbon. So very much like trees in the autumn that shed their leaves, the kelp loses its material throughout the year, so the kelp doesn't actually hold the carbon for very long. So we need to find out where that carbon ends up, where the kelp carbon flows into the ocean and the seafloor, so we can protect it for the long term, and that's why we're here. It's no doubt to me as a scientist that kelp is playing a role in the cycling of carbon. Anna's research is really interesting. You know, we see huge piles of kelp washing in here at Werbeth and it degrades over time. You know, it gets washed into the sediments, it gets chopped up a bit by the tides. But where does it go and how long does it stay there? I think these are still very big questions which we don't yet have the answers to. But we have to give it a go and, and um, it's really nice to be able to see Anna's team and to see what we can do to address these questions. Field work is not glamorous. <laughs> we'll be box scoring first, won't we? So that's yep. incubations first. So we need to keep the crate handy. We've got a lot of things to do and a lot of time, so we're just doing our best to prep everything and make sure everything's organized for the survey. We're just waiting for a table to arrive, which should hopefully within the next 10 minutes, and then we'll be straight off. Much of the work that we'll do on the ship uh, focuses on looking into the sea floor as we move away from its surface. So very much like when you take a ring from a tree, you can see how old the tree is, you, you count the rings. When you move these cores uh, into the sediment, you can move away from the very newer sediment at the surface all the way to the very old sediments at the bottom. And we use different techniques, chemistry and DNA analysis, to tell us about where that carbon in that sediment came from. In principle, we want to know how much of the kelp ended up on the seafloor. So we started off this morning uh, in the mainland of Orkney at the harbour in Kirkwall. And then now we're heading out through the islands and we're making our way up to the island of Sanday. And Sanday is a very important island for us to focus on because we're particularly interested in the dense kelp forests there and we're interested in understanding the storage of carbon that's coming from those kelp forests up in this northeastern part of Orkney. So moving on from Sanday, we'll then be heading further north and we'll be going up to Papa Westray 
And Pape is uh, very well known for its dense kelp forest off the east side. By modelling the way in which kelp fragments travel through the water column, we can find out where are the major sinks for kelp carbon on the ocean floor, and that might tell us which areas in the future we might also need to protect. This is called a box corer, and it's designed to take samples from the seabed. This column here is full of lead, and it drives the box into the seabed at quite a considerable rate. Once it hits the seabed, this spade comes underneath to collect the sample. However, it's a very dangerous piece of equipment, and a lot of care needs to be taken before it's deployed, especially in windy conditions. This piece of equipment is called the multicore, and it deploys four perspex tubes and it differs from the box core in that it's more precise and that it maintains the uh, sample and the water in this column under vacuum. The mechanism is deployed in that the tubes are pushed into the seabed. On retrieval, they're sliced off at the bottom, which uh, maintains the sample. It's been rainy and it's been windy, but the swell is, is not so bad, so hopefully we'll be able to deploy the corers and we'll see if it gets any worse. We're nearly arrived at the site now. Uh, it's about 10 minutes away. We're nearly there. One multi core there. With one multi core. There. And that's it. And that's it. We got everything we wanted today, so that was brilliant. It was a brilliant effort from the team and from the crew. Um, and now it's just packing everything up, our whole portable lab, and taking it back to Plymouth and to Harriet Watts. I'm feeling pretty exhausted and pretty excited at the same time. I think we got some really valuable data today. I think the results from this might be our Christmas present this year. It will be very interesting to see about the levels of carbon in the sediment and I think it's fair to say that often we focus conservation efforts on the habitats and the sediments are not very charismatic habitats but it could be that they are more important than the actual kelp forests themselves and we need to be 
much more aware of where those carbon stores are and what kind of size they are. It's the collaborations in this project which will hopefully make it a success. The blue carbon research expertise at Plymouth Marine Laboratory, the deep understanding of the Orkney ecosystem from Harriet Watt University and the wider experience of conservation of Blue Marine Foundation and Palais. When I'm diving in the kelp forest, I have a, a natural sense of curiosity and I'm always keen to poke around and see what's in there and what might be swimming around close to me. It's very absorbing and I find that it takes me away and completely takes over my mind when I'm under the water and enjoying the marine life.